Welcome to the Short Term Show, the show about short term rentals and long term wealth, with real property owners hosting real properties who are crushing it in the vacation and short term rental space. And here's your host, Avery Carl. This episode of The Short Term Show is brought to you by The Short Term Shop. If you're interested in buying a short-term rental in one of the top vacation markets in America, just go to theshorttermshop.com and click Get Connected with an Agent. If you purchase a home with the shop, you'll have access to all of our client-only benefits, such as training on how to manage your short-term rental. So we'll teach you everything you need to know from how to set up your Airbnb and Verbo listings to how to use the property management software that you'll need to streamline your business, all the way down to helping you source your local boots on the ground like cleaners, handy people, et cetera. We've taught thousands of people just like you how to buy and manage their vacation homes from anywhere in the world. So head on over to the shorttermshop.com and click get connected with an agent to get started. I do have to mention that we're brokered by EXP or else I get in trouble. We'll see you guys over there. Hey guys, welcome back to the short term show. We have a familiar face today, Julie Gates. She is a really good friend of mine, a property manager of a lot of different properties in a lot of different markets and different types of markets. So she has some really unique experience that a lot of us don't have in managing so many in so many different places. So we've had a really interesting show just kind of talking about the the state of the short term rental market this year. So how's it going, Julie? Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for coming. And for those who may not have listened to the previous one, just give us a quick intro of yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do. Absolutely. I My job is that I am a short-term rental property manager. So I'm here to talk property management today. I live in Savannah, Georgia, very proudly love Savannah. And um, I do manage it quite a wide uh, net, but I have been told many times that no one's really talking property management. So I'm here to talk to you all. I know most of your audience self-manages. That's great. And I think we should always be trying to do better and improve. And um, I am fresh off the steps of a trip to Las Vegas. I just got in a few hours ago and I went to a property management convention. So Avery, I brought you all of the dirt. I know it all. And I'm here to announce a lot of things that were told to us as big, bigger property management companies. So I want your audience to also you know, be aware of what's coming down the pike so you can manage your properties better. Well, I think we'd all really love to hear that. So I will let you just take the lead then since you've got some things you want to uh, to hit on and then I'll just ask questions as we go. Absolutely. Well, uh, again, back to my trip to Vegas, our team, our theme is Vegas today. Uh, if you guys will go with that. Um, I would had some really great sessions met with some great vendors. You know, people were you had everyone is in one room. That's the wonderful thing about these conventions. And probably my favorite moment was I took a photo with um, Honor Rag from Price Labs. I have very strange celebrity crushes. And one of those is, is Honor Rag with Price Labs. So I had met with him on Zoom many times, but I got to take a picture with him. I was so excited. But anyway, the biggest announcement I want to tell y'all about that you'll be interested in is booking.com. And I don't know how many of you even consider putting your properties on booking.com. If you spend time with me, you'll realize that I'm really big on diversification. I would never, ever recommend that any of you only are on one platform. That's very dangerous in my opinion. And um, I've seen it in my own practice, in my own practice, my own business and my own real estate and also working with others. It, you're, you have a single point of failure. So always you want to diversify. I do have actually properties on booking.com because I'm a big early adopter and I love these platforms. So I went because I'm a fan and I also manage a hotel and that's on booking. So I want to hear what they had to say, but booking.com is coming for short-term rentals. I had no idea, but they've turned, they have really turned their focus to short-term rentals. They see the value. I think COVID has done a lot of things in this business. And one of the biggest things is these giant companies are like, whoa, we're missing the boat. So what they have announced, which I really think you guys need to tune into this, is that not only are they coming for us, one of the biggest issues with Booking.com, Avery, I know you're familiar with this. This is not news to most people in this world, is the payment issue, is getting paid from booking guests. So they have launched a platform, which is there right now. I observed it in my my account two days ago. I didn't know it was there, but they have a payment platform specifically 
for short-term rentals. They are taking the payment, they're guaranteeing the payment, and they're paying out the day of check-in. This has never been done before. This is news. You no longer have chargebacks. You can set your uh, cancellation policy. Mine is strict. Um, I mean, we now have power with Booking.com that we did not have before. Previously, you had to have your own Stripe account. You hope they didn't do a chargeback. I mean, they've solved a lot of the issues. The other thing Booking has announced, which is huge news, is that in order to draw short-term rental hosts like yourself and myself and Avery in, is that uh, Booking.com has created an insurance policy. So now, similar to Airbnb and what you can get through VRBO, you will be covered for up to a million dollars in damages. They have been listening. And these are pretty major things for this platform, you guys. This is Booking.com is huge internationally. This is a very large platform. This is not a small platform I'm speaking about. This is one of the big players in the industry. And I think this is fantastic. And I am here to recommend that all of you give Booking.com a listen. Right now, um, you're, uh, Europe has a very weak uh, currency compared to the U.S. So we're not getting a lot of Europeans in right now, but give it time. I assure you, as soon as the dollar weakens a little bit, they're going to be flooding over here. And many, many European travelers have never heard of Airbnb. They don't know about VRBO or Expedia. They may, they will most likely find your property through booking. So in order to get ready for that phenomenon, I really recommend that you get on booking. And I have nothing to gain by this. I'm just reporting the news, so to speak. So that is my report on uh, booking. Expedia. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just had a quick question about that. So I know yeah. that a lot of international hosts have a lot of success with booking, but specifically domestically, we, yes. I, at least my personal experience hasn't been that great. So right. I haven't bothered with it anymore. And I think that's kind of what I'm hearing across the board. So you're right. saying they're really trying to step into the space and, uh, and take some of that market share from, from Airbnb probably. Yes, they have listened and I have had houses booked through booking.com and then really regretted it and pulled them off. I personally have done that. And you're hearing that across the board. You've had probably a similar experience. If the guest is A, going to cancel last minute or B, call their credit card two days later and say they know they've never heard of me, meaning I don't get paid. It's really not having, it's not worth having my house on that platform. Right. So they've heard all those complaints, Avery, which is huge. And they've listened and they've already implemented solutions. This is huge news in the industry. And you guys are hearing it first. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. So, you know, I, I know a lot of people have been unhappy with with Airbnb and yeah. and some of its rollout since COVID and everybody's kind of been saying, well, what's the next thing going to be? What's the next thing? And it looks like maybe that might be booking.com. So interesting. Yes. And that is why I'm here to talk to you guys, because I want to keep you abreast of the newest stuff. It's important. This business changes fast, right? So we've got to be in the know. So I'm your girl. Uh, the next, uh, that, so that was probably the presentation that just blew my eyebrows black. I was like, whoa. Second was Expedia. I know we've all heard rumors. If you're on VRBO, you're on Expedia. If you're on Expedia, you're on VRBO. Every bit of that has been a load of, you know what, up until now, unfortunately. And I, I knew that. So I had been putting properties up onto both because I knew they weren't talking. And Expedia bought VRBO three, two, uh, excuse me, six years ago. So this has been a long time coming, but they are officially within the next quarter launching to where VRBO speaks to Expedia. So your properties on VRBO will be fed through. This is huge. They will now have, you know, this is the, a, a massive increase in eyeballs that will see your property. Expedia is a really big deal. And they're also seeing the value in the vacation rental space. So I am still going to put my properties on to both until I hear that that connection is completed. It's not done, but they're, they're flat out saying it will be done this quarter. And that's a big deal that they're even giving those promises because these guys are kind of, they're always nervous, you know, to give predictions. Um, so that's my Expedia news. Have you heard these rumors as well about, are they talking? Are they not? <laughs> I, I have always heard that VRBO and Expedia are the same thing. So you only need to do VRBO. Yeah, I have heard that. So I hadn't dug into it any further than that, but that is interesting news as well. Yes, that is the news. The <laughs> other big player is obviously Airbnb. And I would love to have an announcement. I've got nothing. I heard <laughs> nothing from Airbnb at this convention. In fact, my, my associate, my coworker, and I went to their booth because, you know, I, I wanted to check out the swag and get the news. 
they wouldn't even really look at us. They were all talking to each other. I was kind of surprised the other vendors would be in the hall like, hey, come look at my product. And Airbnb, they kind of were just kind of hanging out, talking to each other. So I grabbed my swag and left. So I have nothing to report on Airbnb. I mm-hmm. apologize. My report is no report. <laughs> so no, maybe they do they have anything else coming. Yes. They do? Right. They said they will in the fall is what I'm hearing. But what that will be, I will report on later. I promise. I mean, it's almost winter. <laughs> I, I agree. So that's from Airbnb. Well, I look forward to that. (laughs) Well, what else did you hear? Anything else interesting at that, at that conference? So many good things. We'll get back to Vegas at the end of our segment, but I do want to talk about something that I I have a feeling you and your uh, audience has been dealing with this year. Um, And I just, you know, we're all in this together. Okay. And I want y'all to feel that because this is true. And I manage nationwide so I can see trends in the market. And on end of August into September, we had what I'm calling a pause. Did you experience this as well everywhere? It was, we all of a sudden just kind of had this like pause in bookings. It was just, it just went way down all of a sudden. Did you also experience this? I did not uh, overall, I might have on one or two properties that I would need to look at, Uh, but I did not, but I've, you know, I've heard it around. Yes, I have as well. I run a lot of hosting groups. And again, I also host and I spent about two weeks pulling owners out of trees. I mean, they're like, get it booked and I'm dropping pricing. I mean, I'm doing everything. It's not like I, I also wanted to get booked. I don't get paid if, if I don't get it booked. So I I'm assuming many of your viewers are nodding their heads and going, yes, that was really stressful. I was reading it on blogs. I was seeing this everywhere. So, and it, it, I brought this up at the convention in Vegas. Did you also experience this? And these huge property management companies that I was talking to, they all went through the same thing. I want to speak to y'all today really quick about two properties that I personally manage. They're here in Savannah and man, these two properties during that pause, I just started seeing stuff come in just very last minute. I was dropping pricing. It wasn't working. I'm adjusting. I mean, I'm doing all the stuff they tell you, adjust your listings, adjust your, you know, to content, everything. These two guys, I could not get booked. So I have a VRBO rep and an Airbnb rep. And I had been just like, y'all, please. I, these owners are so upset. They think I'm incompetent. I can't make a booking fly out of the sky. Like I was doing everything I possibly could. And they kept saying, Julie, you've got to look at the listings as if you've never seen them before. And I have often said the worst person to create a listing for short term rental is the owner because we fall in love with certain things. But what you're in love with is not necessarily anything that the guest cares about. Uh, In fact, there was there's one listing that I tried to take on and I ended up letting it go because all the photos were just of the art on the walls. And I, you know, I didn't want to offend this owner, but I'm like, no one cares about the art on the walls. Like they want to see the kitchen and the bedroom. So anyway, so I looked very closely at these two listings I was really struggling with. And I realized how horrendous the photos are. And do you know who took the photos? My photographer. It's not an issue with the photographer. She's talented. Uh, They're professional. They're high quality, yada, yada but these two owners are my cheapest owners. Okay. And when I really looked at the photos as a whole, these two houses were both uh, completely furnished on a very small budget out of Facebook marketplace. And they had bragged to me about this. And I always like, whenever I'm told this one, they're like, I got it all on Facebook marketplace. I'm always like, yay. Uh, you know, like, and I'm an investor. I understand. I get it that where you wanted the less you spend, you know, the more you make arguably. But when we took this pause and all of a sudden there was less demand, but we have all these houses, guests are very, very visual. So when they have a huge amount of opportunity to book, you know, you have 40 houses you're looking at instead of four, they were over and over and over showing me that the choices were going towards the houses that were well decorated, that were beautiful, that were stylish. And these two houses, I was on the struggle bus. And so I actually very purposely went through the photos and I finally found a couple that kind of popped. And as once I got, I had many people look at them as well. And once I got the best photos I could come up with, it, it's not perfect. They did book very uh, within a week or so and the owners were happy. So I just, I guess my PSA today to the short-term rental world is please like make the house pretty. Guests are visual. I really believe half of your listing could be in German and it really wouldn't matter. The guests pretty much just look at the photos and you might have professional photography, but if you have a blah decor, 
it's that's going to affect your bookings. And ultimately that's going to affect your revenue. So it is my opinion that you should spend more on the decor. Maybe not, you don't have to have William Sonoma in every room, but it should look like William Sonoma in every room, especially in those photos. And I saw this very clearly during this kind of drop in bookings back in September. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content of our podcast, but you have additional short-term rental questions, we host a weekly live question session that you guys can join for free. It's at 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays. And if you head over to strquestions.com, you can sign up. So not only am I the host of this show, but I also own and manage my own properties. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about short-term rental investing. So please join us anytime for a free weekly live Q&A on Zoom. Sign up at strquestions.com. I have a question about that. So those yeah. two listings, how long have those been online? Like when did that person buy them and when the, when did they get up uh, for rental? Both longer, well, one with over a year and one over six months. And they had booked well previously. They're in great locations. We have great reviews. You know, they're, I, I promise you I was racking my brain, but visually they're just okay. So people okay, were choosing- so yeah. And that makes sense. And also, so that's kind of what I was hoping that you were going to say, so I could make mm -hmm. my next point and the difference between buying something last year and renting, getting something up and going last year, which is not a normal year and this right. year. So a lot of people bought stuff at, and just slapped it up last year. So yep. whether it was, you know, maybe they bought in an area that wasn't ideal for the, for the market they were buying in uh, and, it worked last year because everything was so crazy, but in a normal market, it wouldn't necessarily work. Or, you know, maybe the furniture is grandma, but, you know, last year you could have rented a porta john anywhere and it would have rented, but, and this year it doesn't. So the, that's the, the point that I wanted to make is that a lot of people, I'm seeing a lot of people complaining about this business lately that have bought in the last year when last right. year it was really easy and you didn't have to do any work. And this year you actually have to manage and you have to pay attention and you have, to, it, it is a business. It's not a crock pot. You can't just set it and leave it. You do have to get in there and tweak and you have to mess around and um, you do have to manage it. It's it. That's why it's called managing. And um, I think that a lot of people are having that problem. Like same thing with the decor, you know, they just got what they, what they could, what was good enough on Facebook marketplace, but in a real normal market. And sorry, there's a guy blowing blowing pine straw right outside here. Um, and in a normal market, you, you know, you have to pay attention and you have to mind your business. So, yes. um, that's, I think that's part of it too. I totally agree. And every one of y'all, myself included, we have to earn the guests business. They're spending a lot of money with us and they have every right to choose the best product that they can find for that money. And, you know, we need to provide that product. We need to earn that every day. We've got to keep our service high, the homes high. You know, I, it's important to me personally, just that this business is well-respected. You know, I don't want to be this janky host that's trying to make a, you know, as much money as possible off of a couple of rubber bands, you know, around curtain rods, like we, we can all do better. So that's, and Avery, honestly, if you and Luke didn't have much of a pause, that really tells me, I know you have amazing decor. And I think that's a big reason why, because again, when there's so much competition, you need to stand out. You've got to you've got to earn that business. And clearly you did. I also think that a number of, or that if you've been on a long time and have a lot of reviews, that probably helps too. Like some of our properties have been on there for forever. So I think that also plays into it. It's just the age of a lot of our listings that it's, but uh, we have over the years spent time and effort updating and, you know, making sure things were up to date. Like, I mean, gosh, all of our Smoky Mountain properties when we bought them was like, had blue formica countertops and like peel and stick linoleum, like wood look linoleum floors. And when we first bought them, we like, we just had to rent them the way they were because right. we couldn't afford to update them. But, yeah. you know, every, every slow season, we've done one other thing and one other thing. And then now all of our properties are nice and updated and they look really good and have uh good furniture. So, I mean, I don't, there's, it's one thing if you've like, if you're just starting and you got to just do what you can to get where you can get to where you can afford to 
to update the decor, but it really, it does, it does make a difference because people are visual and they're not going to open your listing and read it. If the first few pictures don't grab them and make them. Yes. A thousand percent. And I'm with you, Avery. When I first started buying these rentals, I did not have a lot of money and I used Facebook marketplace and Goodwill. Okay. I'm not saying I'm better than anyone, but I had to replace all of it within three years. So now I very purposely buy furniture that I want to last 10 to 15 because it's a nightmare to redecorate these short-term rentals between guests. I, it's easy to change out the sheets, the pillows, you know, maybe some photos, but a couch, like I want my couch to last. I want my bedroom furniture to be solid wood, you know, so the, the drawers aren't like, you know, like I'd rather spend the money up front and have it last for a long time, but it also looks very beautiful. So yeah. Totally. The decor is huge in this arena. It really is. Mm, so don't think is. you can just get a hundred bucks worth of, you know, decor and make 5,000 a month. I mean, no, not in this market. <laughs> and uh, so I think that a lot of vacation markets, it's interesting because since you're buying properties, if you're in a vacation market, Metro market, totally different. You're starting from scratch a lot of times and you can just curate it the way you want. But at least in the, in vacation markets, a lot of times these are properties that are like, they've been short-term rentals or somebody's second home for a long time. They haven't been updated since the eighties. It looks like the golden girls live in there. Like the beach ones for so long, it's not as much anymore, but it was like wicker furniture, wicker furniture, wicker furniture, salmon colored walls. And now it's things are, that's kind of cycling out. But a lot of times, um, it's, you can, you can salvage some of those things, but you kind of do have to like, just start over. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And the Smoky Mountains is pretty notorious for, for grandma furnishings and, and, uh, and, uh, why can I not think of the word decor, like bear decorations and moose and all yes. that. So yeah, it's definitely, yeah. you got to make a shift to be stand out. Cute. Well, I have, <laughs> I have a luxury rental in Savannah right now. I'm proud of it. It's so unique. It used to be an Irish bar. So you can like stay in a bar, which is awesome. And it's beautiful. And we have professional photography. The stuff isn't junk. But when I look at the photos as a whole, it's very brown. It's weird how it's kind of monotone. So I'm now working with the owner. I like a white wall and it's so much easier to put color in front of that. I don't know if you, you know, how you do with decor, but I always do white walls, gray floors, and then the color comes in and it seems to pop better in photos. I don't know if that's crazy, but that's what I like now. Yeah. White walls are, are pretty much what we, anytime we paint any of our rentals, it's usually white, uh, especially mm -hmm. in the mountain ones where the, some of them are tongue and groove up to like a chair mm -hmm. rail level. And right. a lot of, a lot of the older ones are, they haven't painted like green or red, but when you paint it white, it's just so nice and clean and bright. I, I'm a big fan of white and I'm sure white will go out at some point. And like, remember 10, 15 years ago, everything was khaki. Everything was khaki. So <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure it'll go out at some point. It will, but it, you can get color to pop off of white. That's what I like about it. I've seen it. Cause I look at a lot of listings. That's kind of part of my job is critiquing. I don't build the listings, but I go through and look. And when you have a white wall with a painting in front of it, it's, it's very visually stimulating to the viewer. So you've got to get them, like you said, to click on that listing. Cause they're looking at a whole scroll of listings you know, an Airbnb or wherever they're booking. So anyway, just keep that in mind and look at things very critically. That's yeah. well. That's and also in terms of just having to replace stuff, like having to replace furniture or having to replace decor, if you're not having to match a wall, it's a lot easier. You know, if you've yeah. got a white wall, you've only got so many other things you have to match like rugs yes. and art and et cetera. Whereas if you've got a tan wall, well, that cuts out half, like any cool colors has to be a warm color. So it's, right. um, it just makes it so much easier when, in terms of replacing things. Like I just had, this is my PTSD talking. I just had, um, a bed bug situation in one of mine where we had, oh. where we just changed all the beds. We're like, we don't want to mess with like, we're going to treat it. And then maybe it comes back again. So we just replace everything and walls are white, easy, oh. good to go. Yeah. And then if you have to touch up, it's so dang easy. Cause we always use the same exact paint. And I can paint one wall and you can't tell, whereas a colored wall is so difficult. Yeah. To me, paint is a very easy thing in a house. That's one of the easier things. I'd rather paint a wall than replace furniture, frankly. 
But um, but yeah, just please, that is my message today is decor and photos matter greatly. Um, but I wanted to kind of finish with Vegas, Avery, if you'll tolerate me. I can't, I, I'm a <laughs> property manager, not a money manager. So I, I'm not a professional, but I did bring you a little treat from Vegas. I brought, I wanted to bring you a money management moment. Uh, are you, are you good with us finishing up with some money management, even though we've gone into decor and booking and all that? Yeah, let's talk about it. I'm here for okay. it. Okay. We're all, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor as are you Avery and I'm sure your whole audience. So money management is very important as you know. So um, I was leaving Vegas yesterday and um, our flight was at 6 a.m. And so uh, Chandler and I had to be down, you know, trying to get a taxi at 345. Now, if you were in Savannah at 345 looking for a taxi, you would be, you'd have to walk, uh, you know, but in Vegas, I wasn't real worried because it was like, oh, you know, it's Vegas, like the night is young at 345. But it turned out that we had to wait for a few minutes to find a taxi. So, of course, we got to see many very interesting things that I won't uh, go into uh, you know, there, but I really enjoy speaking with the personnel that handle these things because they have amazing stories. I love stories. And so of course the, um, the gentleman was there to help us with the luggage and help call a taxi. He's just standing there and we're just standing there. So of course I chatted him up and I was like, Hey, I bet you see some crazy stuff, you know, as the bellhop at a casino in Las Vegas, he's like, Oh, you have no idea. And my favorite question to ask is always, what's the craziest thing you've seen? And I've, I've gotten some really great answers from that question. So not even thinking money management at all. I'm just wanting a great story. I said, what's the craziest thing you've seen here, at, you know, at the bellhop? And he said, he said, it happens once a week. He said, I'll never be over it. And I said, what's that? And he said, these guys will go in, they'll win a lot of money. And okay. And he's holding his hands for those of you that are not watching this. He's holding his hands about 18 inches apart. Okay. So it, he's indicating to us that there's a huge stack of money. And he said, they'll walk out with this huge stack of bills. And he said, they'll come right to me and they'll say, get me a taxi. I'm going to the strip club. <laughs> and I was like, what? And he said, they do it all the time. And I thought, well, that's one form of money management. You're earning it here and you're dispersing it. And of course I had to joke. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think his cash on cash return is that great. But that is one <laughs> form of money management that I learned about in Las Vegas, where most people do get their money advice. I don't know. Is anyway, not a professional. Take it for what it were, is worth. <laughs> but uh, money management, keep it in mind. Maybe yeah. we don't take that one. Maybe we kind of hide <laughs> that one. He's probably doing okay on his money management. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, okay. he's pretty organized. So you don't, don't spend your money where you make your money, go spend it elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> where you win your money by pure luck. Yes. Watch that money, money. where you spend it. Yeah. The cash. Yeah, may, uh, back in... <laughs> but yeah, my mom always said, and I'm sure you're, I'm sure everybody's mom says don't flash your money. Like you gotta yes. don't be walking around with it in a stack like that hilarious i am so tight with my money i was like shocked when he said that i was like people do what and he's like every week <laughs> <laughs> so what not to do money management maybe we'll call it that <laughs> <laughs> well that's hilarious uh, okay julie do you have anything else to report back from that conference or any other pieces of news or trends or things coming down the pipe that we need to be aware of as owners and hosts? Those are my highlights. I'm hoping to come back again and continue to talk property management. So please let us know if you enjoyed this. I hope that, you know, everyone likes to talk property management. I definitely do. Uh, but no, that really does conclude my thoughts. I won't <laughs> uh, bore you with my stories any longer, but um, the theme today was Vegas for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. And watch out for booking.com. So maybe if you've tried that before and it, you didn't have much luck, maybe it's time to, uh, to give it another shot. So that's, that's pretty a good one to take away. All right. Well, awesome, Julie. Thank you so much for coming on and we will catch you later. Thanks, Avery.